This is the Kawasaki Z650 RS. Now, if you cast your minds back to, I think it was end of last year, beginning of this year, I tried the 900 version of this machine. Absolutely loved it, apart from some small niggles with a snatchy throttle. I thought it was brilliant. Well, the, that was a four-cylinder engine. The 650 version uses a parallel twin engine, so you can draw some really direct comparisons with this bike with the XSR 700, the Yamaha sort of retro naked machine that they make. So uh, as it happens, I rode the XSR 700 a couple of months ago, the Velocity Moto version. So I'm really keen to see how this compares to the XSR 700. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable and chopsy. Roll the intro. So this bike is from Wheels Motorcycles. So first of all, massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for, for dropping this down for me to try. I'll put links below. This is their demonstrator. So if you want to ride this exact bike, give them a ring, put yourself in, get yourself a test ride. So before I get going in anger on this video, I just want to say a big apology because I've managed to lose all of my on-bike camera mounts. I was doing some work with Womble in the garage the other week and I've, I've mislaid my mount. So I can't find a way of mounting anything to the bike. I haven't even got a camera looking back at me. So I've just got the GoPro today. I feel naked. I, f I feel like I've let you down because I've just got a one camera review here, which seems really terrible. So I'm not going to get you those dynamic 360 shots <laughs> because I've lost my camera mounts. Well, I haven't lost them, I mislaid them. So apologies for that. We've just got the GoPro today. So straight away, this video is sounding a bit shitty, isn't it? But to make it all better, we've got this green and gold beauty. Work it, baby. Work it, baby. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Show us your headlights. So this is a relatively nice, cheap, basic machine. You know, this is, this is £8,000 of your money. It's slightly more expensive for this lovely green paint scheme. Another, I think it's another 250 quid. But it's an eight grand motorcycle. It's A2 compliant. It's, I think it's 67 horsepower, 64 newton meters of torque, six, 649 cc's. So it's not going to blow your socks off. But I mean, this is a, you know, an entry level, cheap, basic motorcycle. None of those electronic nonsenses, you know, just ABS, all you need. And it sounds quite nice too. Listen to this. Ooh. No force and screaming, but uh, a throaty-ish note nonetheless. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I've recently ridden the XSR 700. You know, that was the one with the Velocity Moto. You know, it looked like an RD. 350 that bike i'll put a picture on the screen there's a review of that up the top i mean this is the uh, i guess the direct competitor with the yamaha you know very similar size engine same similar power figures you know a direct competitor and uh, jumping aboard it actually feels pretty similar to the xsr you know these bikes are built to a budget you know you've got you know, the standard way up suspension you haven't got upside down suspension you know not non-adjustable suspension at that certainly at the fork end i'll have a look at the uh, the rear shock when we stop for the walk around but it's it's a budget bike you know there's no electronics which i think is quite a good idea i don't really want electronics on low power for motorcycles just give me some abs and i'm perfectly happy there's no wheelie control yeah you, know, you, you don't need all that do you the riding position feels, yeah, very similar to the XSR. It's sort of quite bouncy, you know, this seems like there's quite a lot of flex in the motorcycle. The rear shock could be a little bit soft. I mean, I'm 20 stone, you know, six foot two. So, you know, I'm I'm a big old unit. So I'm, I'm gonna be sort of overwhelming the suspension on this a little bit, but uh, it feels soft. It feels, you know, jumping aboard straight away. It feels comfortable. I mean, the seat is that retro star. So you've got that long sort of bench seat. So there's plenty of options to sort of move around to get to get comfortable on it but right jumping on riding yeah it, it's a nice place to be a nice place to be just to bring in the views and have a little 
chug around. Oh, he's dressed for action, isn't he? Tweeds and boots. Very middle class. But it, it's actually pretty agile. And, and one of the, my sort of issues with the XSR was even though the one I rode had uprated cartridges, had uprated rear shock, there was just a lot of flex in the chassis. And straight away I could tell this this like this doesn't mind going on its side as much as the XSR did. You really the XSR didn't want to, you know, you'd never get rid of the chicken strips <laughs> on the XSR. It just wouldn't, but it didn't want to lean over that much. This feels a bit more agile, you know, it still feels a comfortable, you know, place to be, you know, it's squishy suspension. But I feel at the moment initially that it's a little bit happier when the pace picks up. The chassis is perhaps a little bit more taut than the Yamaha. On the gas, <laughs> it takes a little while to wind up on the power. But yeah, that, that isn't too bad a handling machine. We'll put it through the, uh, the hill climb in a minute, but I fancy that handles slightly better than the XSR. It's a squirrel. I love the clocks. I love the sort of retro clocks with the speed and the rev counter. Proper analog dials. Got a lot of time for that. And you've got a little LCD in the middle just giving you your information like your fuel, fuel gauge, gear, if you know, it's bike temperature, what gear you're in. And also you've got range to empty as well on the, uh, on the buttons up and down. There's a few things you can cycle through, including range to empty. So that, that's, that's a nice little feature. You don't even get that on many Ducatis. <laughs> you don't even get a fuel gauge on many Ducatis, let's be honest. Oh dear, oh dear. It's got all a bit soggy. One of my criticisms with the 900 version of, well, one of the, probably my only criticism with the 900 version of this bike, I really liked it, but it had a bit of a snatchy throttle. And a few people said, yeah, you know, yeah, it has got snatchy throttle, but you can get a dongle which you plug in and it fixes that, which is great. On this, it's the same story. It has a bit of a snatchy throttle, but it's not as bad as the 900 version. You know, I could probably live with the snatch on this throttle, but on the 900 I couldn't. But I mean, it's, it's you know, you go on the gas and it sort of leaps forward. It doesn't matter how little you turn the throttle grip, there's a, there's, a, there's a jump as it comes on the power. Which in a higher gear at lower revs is what I'm talking about. But it's not too bad. I can live with it. A bit of snatch. Normally I'm all for it. The bike is a little bit weighty. It's 187 kilos fully fueled and it's got a 12 litre tank. So not a massive tank. And it's 187 kilos wet. But it's, I guess that's not too bad, is it? It's not the best, it's not class leading, but ugh, you know, it, it, it's okay. And that weight feels like you're carrying it relatively low. I mean, it, it feels like it changes direction pretty decently, this bike. But it's got a real, and I found this with a lot of Kawasaki's, it's got a real good build quality. The, the 900 was the same, you know, I was really impressed with the, the overall build quality of the machine. And this is, this is the same. We're stopping a minute and we'll do a bit of a walk around, but um, I actually think the build quality on this is better than the Yamaha. It's got a lovely feel, the controls are nice. There's a little bit of vibration, you know, as you push the revs up a little bit, sort of over 4,000 revs, I'm getting a little bit of a buzz. Awesome, not buzz so much, but a bit of vibration through the seats. Not too bad through the bars, a little bit through the bars. But you know, it's a tiny little bit vibey, but I don't think any more so than the XSR. The gearbox is also nice, it's quite a precise pheasant. Is that a duck or a pheasant? It's got quite a, a, a precise sort of shift into gear. No quick shifter and blipper, obviously. We're 100% we're analogue on this machine. Oh, I thought we were going to get a dry, a dry hill climb. Looks like we may get, it may be a bit wet. That'll be a real shame. Let's give it a go. Look about to go absolutely bad, Zai. It's not the sort of bike to go absolutely bad, Zai, on either. Yeah, it's um, it's not bad. It's definitely better than the XSR. 
Yeah, it definitely gives you more confidence. I'm not getting that same, you know, horrible sort of uh, flex through the chassis like on the XSR. But as the revs go up, the vibes also increase quite a lot. But it's, it's definitely better handling than the XSR, which is an important point. You know, if you're looking for a sort of retro naked, this is the better from the handling perspective out of the two. A little bit of a roll on, shall we? 20 miles an hour, third gear. Hey! <laughs> it's not going to blow your socks off, is it? You know, and it's a little bit of a shame. And if this was a 650 four pot, 650 four cylinder, it would be a right little screamer. Because the 900 is a right little screamer, but you know, the, a par this, this parallel twin, I don't think the engine is quite as exciting as the engine on the XSR either. It's certainly a shame it's not a four-cylinder engine, but hey-ho, you know, these bikes in this price range, they tend to be twins. But uh, I don't think it's got quite as a, a fun feel and as, as a fun ride as the XSR, actually. I think the XSR, the engine is perhaps a little bit, bit nicer, a bit more playful, even though this handles better. Mm. Tricky. Let's go up here, do a little walk around. Very nice up here. Very, very nice. There's quite a nice little little walk around here. You can walk through this field, you go up here, it's, it's really nice. Look at that, it's looking a bit more like England again, isn't it? Now we've had a bit of rain. The grass has uh, sprung back to life again. But what a summer we had, eh? What a summer we had. Look at this. Very pleasant. Oh, hang on a minute, where's the tarmac going? Let's park it in the sun and do a little bit of a walk around. Oh, gorgeous. Neutral, straight away. None of that nonsense on the Kawasaki. There she is, the Z650 RS. Sun's gone in now, typical. So up front, I was wrong. <laughs> We've got Nissan calipers. As I said, conventional way up forks, but that's sort of in keeping with the sort of retro theme, really, isn't it? But that, that brake setup works beautiful. I love the gold wheels. I mean, it's, it's a winning combination. That green, I mean, I'd like a slightly more, it's a little bit loud, that green. It's a little bit loud. It's a nice green, but I'd like a little bit more, a little bit, bit darker green, maybe. But I think the colours, the gold wheels, the green paintwork, really, really nice, actually. Really, really nice. Ooh. I love the raised sort of classic Kawasaki uh, lettering on the tank and this pinstriping as well. Look at the pinstriping on here. And it's the same story with the, with the badging on the, on the panels. Is that metal? Nice little setup for the exhaust, sort of an underslung exhaust. You know, look, looks reasonable, doesn't it, for a standard exhaust system? Doesn't look too big. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Here's that 67 horsepower monster. 67 horsepower, 64 newton meters of torque. I believe. The seat is very nice. You've got, you know, the one on the RS was the same, sort of nice sort of stitching. You know, it's it's not suede, but it's got like a suede look to it and sort of a leather suede look to it. Yeah, and it's pretty wide as well. Pretty wide and it seems reasonably comfortable. Tail light is quite similar to the 900 version. Nice sort of retro styled back end without, you know, even though it's without too much of a massive overhang for a tail tidy either, sort of. I could live with that setup. Front headlight, we've got a full uh, LED setup by the look of it. No halogen bulbs here. We're full LED. There's those clocks. Nice little setup, lovely little retro setup. I do like these twin, twin clock setups that the RS models have, really nice. Switch gear also feels nice and quality, you know. The bike's got a real good quality feel to it. The 900 version did. And this 650 version has as well. There's nothing you can look at and think, oh, look at that. You know, that's not very good. And this is an eight grand bike. Um, I think, you know, the quality of this is really surprisingly good. Rear suspension, no, I don't think it's adjustable. 
I don't think the suspension has any adjustment to it at all by the look of it. Not even like a, you know, a clip to, to adjust the preload. Looks like it's got nothing, nothing. One thing it doesn't have, which it, it's the 900 did, it had some nice sort of diamond cut wheels on the 900. There's no diamond cut wheels on the 650, but uh, yeah, I do like that, that gold and green combo though. It's, it's a really good looking, well-made motorcycle. You know, it does not look like a cheap budget. I know it's, you know, it's, eight, it's not that budget, but it's 8,000 pound. You know, it's not a massively, any bike which is sub 10K, you know, these days, you know, is sort of on the budget side, isn't it? And, but it doesn't look budget. It looks like a lovely bit of kit. Oh no, I'm confused again. No, it's not that way. We'll go this way because we're, we're gonna need some, no, we'll go back where we came. Sorry, sorry. Oh yeah, whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready, I'll come by. You can do, do you mind in two abreast, yeah? Yeah, you're right, yeah, never mind the traffic, never mind the, the paying uh, road users. You just block the road. What is interesting, it's there, that's not even interesting, I'm not gonna mention it. <laughs> hey! <laughs> the XSR would be all over that for a wheelie. This is not quite as playful from the uh, getting the wheel at that point of view. Oh, he's on about wheelies again, for God's sake. Can't ride anything without mentioning wheelies. So there we go, the XSR 650. Better quality feel, better handling than its uh, rivals, the Yamaha XSR 700. But I think maybe the engine not quite as playful. That would be my sum up of this machine. But uh, if you've enjoyed the video, thanks very much. Apologies for not having any other cameras. I do feel a little bit naked without the other cameras. So uh, really sorry about that. I'll definitely get it sorted for the next video. But uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget, press the subscribe button. I've got lots of other reviews. If you haven't seen my review of this bike's brother, the 900 RS, I'll pop it on the top there. And don't re and remember, check out wheels motorcycles and if you want to ride they've got some great deals on and if you want to ride this exact bike give them a ring book yourself in and take it out for a little bit of a spin but there we go guys thanks so much for watching and i'll see you on the next video cheers this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Uh, and I couldn't pick it up. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs>